This week on The Splash, the biggest rejection, the newest from the communities, and family time outdoors. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories, also that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash, I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for being with us. This story intro has been rejected. To learn about how to handle rejection, watch the seminar thrown by the Chamber of Commerce brought to you by Elizabeth Shands. Recently, the West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce hosted Rup Raj, a popular news anchor from Channel 2 News, to talk to local business owners about rejection in the workforce. I like it. It's very relatable. You can you can do you know, face the you know, being a, a celebrity as he is, a very relatable person, very nice. To, just like talking to the guy across the table. I really enjoyed his upfrontness and his personal experiences. The message resonated amongst those in the audience who had faced similar struggles within their own careers. Rejection equals failure only if you uh, believe it uh, and take it as a final verdict. It's a, it's a truism to say that if you're afraid to fail, you're never going to succeed, and I found that to be true. I've had several different careers over the course of my life. Mr. Raj talked about reinvention. I'm a lifelong learner, and uh, education is the key to um, success. Always be willing to learn. I was in the corporate um, finance world for the first 16 years of my career. You know, sort of climbed up, realized I loved running teams, you know, I, you know, became a leader many, many, many years of that. And then some leadership shifts happened within our organization and I didn't work there anymore all of a sudden and it was a, a very much a traumatic heartbreak experience. I mean it completely reshaped my entire life. I took some time off, I did a lot of thinking, a lot of researching, and I decided I wanted to do something on my own and um, fortunately we were able to make that happen so here we are. While looking into the future there are many different strategies to face the hurdles that are encountered in the workforce. That gives you a chance to force you to start over whether you want to build and you know, oh, I always wanted to do that but now I have a chance to do that because I've taken an extra step or something said no to this idea, now I can go into a different, a different path and I'm glad I did because I would have never done it if it wasn't for the rejection or the, the comments from before. We all get to where we need to be ultimately and I mean regardless of how you get there, I mean it's going to take some pain, right? This life isn't easy. Life throws curveballs. Just follow your gut and your instinct. And when things don't feel right in a situation you're in, what personal career, anything, you need to really stop and think and reevaluate the situation because something's not in line. And one of the things I did uh, while I was changing careers most recently is I decided I wanted to get involved in my community. Uh, it wasn't a it wasn't a job opportunity. It was an opportunity to get out and uh, be useful and learn more about the people around me. I joined the Rotary Club and I'm with the West Bloomfield Rotary. It's been one of the most satisfying experience of my uh, middle-aged adult life. Uh, I've met new people. I've learned more about my community than I ever would have in any other walk of life. Prior to being with the Rotary Club, I had an active career, but my business was really a national footprint business. West Bloomfield was a was a suburb that I really was not involved in community affairs at all. But it's totally changed the way I look at uh, what's going on up and down the street in my, own, uh, in my own community. It's been a very rewarding experience. And that has led to opportunities in business as well. The message of Roop Raj will continue to motivate members of the community to persevere and work to their fullest potential. This is Elizabeth Schantz reporting for The Splash. You can find more information at our website at civiccentertv.com slash rejected link. Next up, we hear all about what's happening around our communities directly from our leaders. Jay Kustash stops by this year's State of the Communities. On March 12th, our community held the annual State of the Community Address. It was an empty house due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but it was still a lively and informative show. We heard from West Bloomfield Township Supervisor Steve Kaplan about their upcoming housing developments, including the upcoming... Cranberry Park, the Reserve, and Town Court Apartments. And what we discovered is that we have, we're sufficient in terms of senior citizen facilities, and we have an abundance of single family homes, probably 21,000 in West Bloomfield, but we have a need for lofts, for mixed use, for apartment buildings, for attached condominiums. 
And because of that study that the board undertook, we now have developers seeking to purchase land and develop in the areas that we need. Mayor Hoffman of Orchard Lake talked about ways to improve their public safety by discussing their plans to improve their police department and City Hall campus. The uh, current police uh, setup at Orchard Lake is, is been outgrown. It's out, we've outgrown it. Um, we're looking to improve it, to enhance the safety for the police personnel and for the people in the offices. Mayor Lorenz of Sylvan Lake informed us about their infrastructure millage renewal and the plans to support street and drainage projects throughout the city. And that infrastructure millage would be used uh, just like you would use the bond money, but it gives us much, much more flexibility. Where we don't have to use it all at once, we can go ahead and repair roads that need to be repaired when they need to be repaired. Uh, we uh, certainly do need to repair a lot of our roads at this point because it was 20 years ago that the roads were done. Overall, it was a great event for everybody in our community, whether they're watching at home or presenting on stage. And reporting for The Splash, I'm Jay Kustosh. For more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash SOTC2020. Later in the show, your mama went on a hike. We have a dramatic interview with Rich Wilson. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for being with us. In an effort to get families outdoors, WB Parks hosting their monthly Mommy and Me hike for people in the community. Ellie Hadi brings us the story. With technology at our fingertips, it's very easy to forget about the world around us. But West Bloomfield Parks reminds us every day to just take a hike with the Mommy and Me hike. West Bloomfield Parks hosts a Mommy and Me hike monthly, so we meet the first Thursday of every month, usually inside our nature room at the Recreation Activity Center, but sometimes in the summer months we might change our location up to explore new places, and we welcome all ages, so infants all the way up to grade school and teenagers even if they want to join when they're not in school in the summer. The Mommy and Me hike is for the whole family. Anyone can tag along. Daddy, Grammy, and grampy too. We do get a lot of young families that are looking for ideas on how to bring their kids outside and how to engage them outside. So we sing songs on the trail, sometimes we'll even stop in the middle of the trail and do a craft. So we do different activities besides just walking because as most of you know if you're a parent of young children you need to keep them engaged and so we do lots of different activities that engage them in the, with the outdoors. We try and keep it sensory so we smell different things, touch things that are safe to touch and we encourage them to be outside in all weather but we know when we have babies on the trail maybe those winter months aren't the best time to be outside for an hour so we do have supplemental, supplemental activities where we come into our nature room here they get to meet some of our live animals, um, we might do a craft inside Inside. We might even bring nature inside. While the Mommy and Me hike has indoor activities, they tend to stay outdoors in the spring and summer months. So in the spring months and the summer months, we usually try to be outside for the full hour if possible. And there's lots more to explore outside as thing, new things are blooming, um, new nature noises, obviously birds are starting to sing. So um, kids really stay more focused when they're engaged in all their senses. So we definitely make, listen for frog sounds in the spring, look for more things that are starting to grow. So there's lots more to see and hear outside as spring is approaching and we try to spend most of the time out on the trail. Azuri tells us what we have to do to join in on the fun. To register for our Mommy and Me hikes there's no charge. It is a free program at West Bloomfield Parks but we do ask that you register in advance because we only have certain so many spaces available. So you would go to wbparks.org to register and like I said it does usually sell out um, free of charge but register in advance to make sure you and your kiddos have a spot. I'm definitely signing up and you should too. I'll see you all on the trails. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Ollie Hattie. To know more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash mamahike. And now it is time for the Civic Center TV event update, where we provide you with upcoming events going on in our community. And for a look at additional events, visit civiccentertv.com slash events.
Dispose of prescription drugs with Operation Medicine Cabinet happening year-round in West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, and Orchard Lake. This project takes place at the police departments of the three communities. Disposing of drugs is completely anonymous. Open 24-7 in West Bloomfield, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Kego Harbor, and Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Orchard Lake. For more information, visit oakgov.com or call your local police. It is time for a library update. The West Bloomfield Public Library will be ceasing all non-essential services until further notice. For the time being, you can still make quick visits in to select and check out materials, including books and DVDs. The library also wants to remind you about their digital services they offer, such as e-books, audiobooks, movies, TV, magazines, and music. For more information, visit wblib.org. And West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation has canceled all programs and has closed all facilities from now until April 6th. All parks will remain open to the public at this time and they will be continuing essential transportation services through the Community Transit Program. Those who have registered for any of the canceled events will automatically receive a refund to their household account. Visit wbparks.org for additional information. And Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital has canceled all classes and events until May 1st. They are hoping to resume classes starting in May, but will be updating the community as time progresses. To find out more on their events and also tips about handling COVID-19 pandemic, you can visit henryford.com. And that's it for this week's highlights. You can find more events and updates online at civiccentertv.com slash events and see everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, I'll sit down with Rich Wilson from Stagecrafters and director of Don't Drink the Water. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. You want it, you got it. Civic Center TV has been bringing you live coverage of your local municipal meetings for years. Now you can catch a replay of those meetings the following day at 1 o'clock and again on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m. If that's not enough, you can also visit civiccentertv.com slash meetings to view a whole list of on-demand township board meetings and keep up to date on the most recent developments in your local government. Giving you more, it's Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm joined this week by Rich Wilson, director of Don't Drink the Water at Stagecrafters and also the treasurer of yes. Stagecrafters. And thanks so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So, um, of course, I met you because I auditioned for Don't Drink the Water, currently in the show, but there's a little bit of issues going on with this. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about the show in general, Don't okay. Drink the Water. Tell me about it. Don't Drink the Water is a comedy about a family, husband, wife, and daughter that are vacationing in Eastern Europe during the Cold War. And like any father, the um, Walter wants to take a picture of what's going on and happens to take a picture of a few missiles and launching sites. And the government of that country thinks that they're spies and so they run into the American embassy claiming asylum to, for protection from, from the, uh, the government. Right. And from there, it just goes downhill. <laughs> from there, it goes downhill. You have an ambassador who has gone, his son is running the embassy, and who basically has been kicked out of every country that he's ever been in and within the Foreign Service, normally under very bad circumstances. Um, and so it's, a, it's basically a comedy of errors as they try to hatch a plan to get Walter and Marion and Susan the Americans out of the embassy and, and back to the U.S. Back to Jersey, right? Back to New Jersey, yes. <laughs> back to Jersey. So, yes, yeah, so the show is a lot of fun. It um, is. I have been loving the rehearsals, <laughs> and now we have come to a screeching halt. We have. So uh, let's talk about that. I mean, the impact on not just stagecrafters, but in general, this is going to be a big loss of money if these shows get canceled. It is. It, it is detrimental for not just stagecrafters, but all the community theaters, not only in Detroit, but all over the place. Um, we had shows that were planned and our shows are, are budgeted by year. Mm -hmm. um, right now, on we have a smaller theater upstairs called our Second Stage, which is a 100 th seat theater that we had working the musical that was supposed to open this past Friday. We've canceled, we canceled the first weekend. So they never opened? They never got to open. Okay. They were fully rehearsed. They were ready to go. Set was up, everything. And the board discussed things on Thursday and made the decision Thursday evening, nope, we can't do this. 
um, for safety reasons, not only of the actors, but also of the patrons, we had to close. Um, so we have not canceled things the entire run of it. It was due to run for three weekends. But we are following the governor as well as the CDC guidelines that where as long as the um, prohibition against central meeting areas is in place, mm -hmm. we will have to continue to cancel them. But we're keeping them on the calendar from the aspect that if by some stroke of genius next Wednesday, the skies <laughs> part, the CDC right. comes down and says everything is fine, you can start meeting in, in public areas again, we can still go on and, and those tickets will be honored. But um, it, is, it can be a very large financial drain on the organization, um, primarily for a community theater. You know, that's one of our big money makers, obviously, is the sale of our tickets. Mm -hmm. And if we can't perform a show, um, it becomes a, a drain on your revenue. Fortunately, there are, there are options that patrons can make. Um, if you miss a show, you can donate your price of your ticket as a donation to the theater. Oh, okay. Um, rather than asking for a refund. Or you can get a, sh a ticket to a subsequent show, which again, doesn't cost the theater any money. It's You're just, just a simple transfer of funds. Um, but if a patron does call up and say, my show is canceled, I want a refund, of course we will refund their money. But there are other area or other avenues that people can, can, can pursue rather than automatically assuming, I want my money back. Right. So, okay, so our show is set to open April 10th. Yes. So we are kind of right on that line, right? We're very, we're very much on the, on the cusp of go, no go. Right. That everything right now I've heard is either March 31st or even extended all the way through April 8th is sort of when the ban expires. Um, our show is the 10th. Even the construction of our set has had to halt. So... We've got walls built mm -hmm. that haven't been installed yet for our set. So if we were asked, or if the ban was lifted on the 8th, we would probably have to cancel the first weekend and reassign those shows later on in the run. For instance, the first weekend is just a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We could do a Saturday matinee and a Sunday evening performance for oh, okay. two weekends to make those up. Give us another week to get, get the, the set, set built get the actors ready to go, mm -hmm. and then we would open. Okay. So it, it would be a bit of a rush, but I think for everyone that's involved with the show, we would probably want to go ahead and do the show with mm -hmm. as hard as everyone has been rehearsing with the people that are doing costumes and props and, and building so the set. There's so many people involved. There's so many people involved outside of just the cast that, you know, to be fair to them, if we can go, I'm hoping that the board will agree for us to go. We're actually meeting Wednesday to talk about not only the, the performances of, of working that are still on the calendar, but also Don't Drink the Water and how long we will go before we would say, all right, this show is, we're going to have to postpone the opening of the first weekend and we'll reschedule shows, or are we just going to let those shows go and, and just open right. the second week? No, don't let it go. <laughs> this is my first show in like 10 years. <laughs> so no, so it's been a lot of fun, but in all seriousness, I mean, revenue's lost. And people do. I mean, I have a small part, so I'm not, I am invested, but not as much as the other people. And, and you, I mean, you had said at auditions you wanted to do this show for a couple of years, right? So this has been on your radar for <laughs> a long has. time. I was accepted. I got chosen in November of 2018, yes, to do this show. Okay. So literally, I have waited almost two years right. to do this show. Um, and, you know, just like working and there's a there's a show after hours upstairs in the smaller theaters the stick wife they've waited that long too and it, it's really sad um what is happening not only on the professional theaters like broadway but our regional theaters and our community theaters um, where people who have real jobs mm -hmm. that they love the theater they go and audition for a show such as right. you did volunteer their time and efforts work their nine to five job then go to the theater and rehearse from 7 to 10 o'clock, three to four days a week, get a show ready to go, and then have something like this happen, and it's all for nothing. It's amazing, though. I mean, this, when has this ever happened? I, I don't remember this ever happening. You know, it's, it's hard to wrap my head around, um, you know, why the, the 
quarantines, if you want to call them that, or the bans on public meetings. You know, I just have to put my faith in that the, the CDC and our governor knows what is best for the people, not only of, of the state of Michigan, but also of the U.S., and that if this is the best way that, to beat this virus, then mm. that's what has to be done. So, uh, real quick, tell me what theater means to people. I mean, you have season ticket holders. I know what it means to me, but in general, the public, tell me what it means. It's a way of escaping. It provides some place where you can go and for two or three hours be transformed into some place where all of your day-to-day -day worries disappear. Mm -hmm. um, we're scheduled to do Mamma Mia at the end of the season, opening um, the end of May, beginning of June. And for three hours you can go and be in, on a Greek aisle, even that though you're nice. in, well, It does, doesn't it? <laughs> you can be on a Greek aisle despite the fact that you're in a seat in the theater in Royal Oak, Michigan. Um, it just gives you a window of something that you may not have the chance independently to see on your own. And it's not all happy. Right. You know, dr theater encompasses drama and encompasses comedy. You know, for me, I, I like directing comedies. Um, I'm a bit of a ham myself, so I think yes. it just, <laughs> if you haven't to right. noticed through rehearsals. Um, but it, it's, to me, it, it's that sense of comedic timing that you've got to have because if a, if a line is funny but it's delivered in the wrong timing, it can fall really flat. So it's making sure your actors have, knowing how to deliver a line to make sure that the audience is, is understanding in the, in the comedic way that it's meant. And plus it's just, it's a great night, right? It is. I mean, it's a great night, whether you're at a matinee on a Sunday or just the evening. It's, you know, you look, people look forward to that. They do and for Community theaters, it's an opportunity for people to experience theater that may not be able to afford tickets at the Fox or at the Fisher. Mm -hmm. I mean, our tickets at Stagecrafters generally are around between $20 to $25, depending on the venue, which when you compare that to a Fox or a Fisher is half, maybe a third of the price of the tickets. And ours, you know, a $25 ticket can get you front row <laughs> right. versus at the Fisher where a front row ticket can cost you $225. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a difference there. A little bit, just a little bit of a difference. Okay, so if anyone was interested in keeping up to date on shows that are hopefully going to go up at uh, Stagecrafters, what do they need to do? They can go to www.stagecrafters.org. Okay. Um, we will keep things posted on there about what shows are up and, and they can see what shows not only for the rest of this year, but once we announce our season for next year, they can see what, what shows are coming up for there. You can, they can go, um, there's a link to order tickets online. Um, they can also become a season ticket holder, mm -hmm. which basically would allow them the opportunity to see all five of our main stage shows for next year. Basically, the, the bargain price is that you get five shows for the price of four. Nice. Yes. Okay. Well, you know what? We're going to keep our fingers crossed that Don't Drink the Water goes <laughs> up, right? Exactly. Uh, so thank you so much, Rich. I appreciate you coming. You're very welcome. And again, uh, we have been joined by Rich Wilson, my director of Don't Drink the Water and also the treasurer of Stagecrafters. And next on the show, we hear about the health benefits of rowing on the biz. People enjoy the convenience of a gym located right near their home. One of the area's latest workout facilities is situated right here in West Bloomfield on the southeast corner of Maple and Orchard Lake. City Row offers a unique experience in that it can supplement your regular gym activity or it can give you a great workout all on its own. So at City Row we do several different workout types ranging from cardio to strength training to more core. It varies by day, we switch it up every single day so you're not plateauing. So rowing's actually primarily a leg-driven sport. It's 60% uh, legs, 20% body, and 20% arms. Typically at the gym, you'll have your own self-led workout, whether it's weights, cardio, if you wanna push yourself. Here you're gonna get more of a high intensity interval type training workout and you're having an instructor push you to go past your limits this will allow you to help strengthen your cardiovascular health in a different way. The workout at City Row is so fulfilling and addicting that one man has driven to West Bloomfield from Farmington over 120 times in just four months to participate in the challenge. Robert Capico is one of those rowers who has ditched the traditional gym altogether. I rowed when I was in college. That was many, many years ago, way over 50 years ago. And 
Um, I wanted uh, to continue that in a way because I know that rowing is a very strenuous, rigorous, uh, demanding activity. You're engaged with um, an instructor, and the instructor guides you through um, a, a variety of activities. You use a variety of muscles designed to enable you to row for a spell and then work on a mat for a while using other kinds of um, muscles. When you do that, uh, and you do that with that kind of guidance, it maintains a certain pace and it enables you to stay with that pace and engage in that activity and you know that you're getting the benefit of that kind of exercise. You feel the effects of what you just did. I think by comparison to what I was doing before, it's too easy to stretch it out, too easy to skip it, too easy not to engage in the rigor that you really want, which you can't really do by yourself. Now this is my only workout, yes. I try to, I try to row here at City Row every day, and uh, it's, my, it's my single purposeful, most purposeful activity. While Sam and Robert have been rowing most of their adult lives, City Row is welcoming to any person of any experience. Everyone's a character. We have numerous that come in. It ranges from people in college to others who are in their 70s and 80s. This is the only class we have. It is open to all levels. You basically push yourself as hard as you can go. A rowing machine, it uses its own resistance generated by you. So the harder you press, the more of a workout you're gonna get, but it's all tailored towards the individual. You can be a, a person who's been here for many, many months um, next to a person who just started. Um, what, you, what you find is that the instructor has the ability to work with that person who's new and get them going and um, help them with, their, with, the, uh, with the form that rowing engages in. And uh, while well, uh, well, the ones, the people that have been here for a spell can just con can continue because they know what they're doing and the new person will catch on rather quickly. Reporting for The Splash, this is Lawrence Nyland. Thank you for coming in. It was a great class today. For more episodes of The Biz, visit civiccentertv.com slash the biz. And now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week, where we celebrate the people in the community who are inspiring and providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Adam Feynman. Adam is the head dentist and owner of Feynman Dentistry. Growing up, he was surrounded by dentistry with his father being an orthodontist and his mother being a dental hygienist. He's been practicing dentistry in our area for over 15 years. And this past year, he took over the practice of his location in West Bloomfield. And this move allows him to take care of the people of his community and ours. Making your visit to the dentist comfortable is one of the ways he makes his practice special. And whether it's interacting with the friendly in-office staff or seeing their therapy dog, Zuzu, the dedication to health in our community is what makes him the person of the week. If you know someone who's making a positive difference, let us know. Message us on social media with any and all suggestions because we want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community. That's it for this week's show. You can watch new episodes anytime online in HD at civiccentertv.com, Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m., Civic Center TV on Comcast 15 and AT&T Channel 99. And of course, follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Civic Center TV. You can also listen to me weekdays from 10 a.m. to 2 on WWJ News Radio 950. So for all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for watching The Splash. <laughs>